Today, I'm gonna show you two of my favorite items. One is the brownie pan and one is the mini brownie pan. So the brownie pan had a baby. <laughs> First, you got the brownie pan, 12 square little brownies. So then you're gonna get outsides on all of the pieces and a nice ooey gooey middle. And you can do more than just brownies. I used this for my son's birthday party and made um, cupcakes in it, and it was a Minecraft birthday party, so then I created the Minecraft cake out of the square cupcakes. You can do eggs, you can do mini cornbread breads, you could do zucchini bread, banana bread. You could do mini meatloafs in it. 20 minutes later. I've seen mini lasagna. Possibilities are endless. Then you have the mini brownie pan. I'm gonna make one box of brownie mix, but I'm gonna split it between the two pans. So I'm going to quickly give them a spritz with our oil spritzer. You can put any, most any types of oils in here. This one is just olive oil. And all I'm going to do is a real, real, just right in the middle. And that's it. I don't know how many I'm gonna need on the mini ones. So I only did the middle two rows. If we need to do more, we'll just add it later. We are gonna be using our batter mixer dispenser. I use this thing at least once a week, mainly to make pancakes. My six-year-old loves it because she can come up and make her own pancakes with it and it makes her feel very independent. Uh, it also has settings. So it's got like a small, medium, and large. So the small setting is two tablespoons. Medium setting is three tablespoons, and the biggest setting is four tablespoons or a quarter of a cup. So for filling the regular size brownie pan, we're gonna use the largest setting. And for the minis, I'm gonna start with the small one. And if we need a little more, we can just add like a half a squeeze. With the batter mixer dispenser, you're gonna want to put your liquids in first and then your dry ingredients. Since the brownie box is pretty big, I'm actually going to split it up. So I'm going to do liquids, then some of the dry, the rest of the liquids, and the rest of the dry. I've already gone ahead and the recipe calls for two eggs and I went ahead and cracked those. And I'm gonna start with that as my first liquid. Now I will add about half of the mixture. Next it called for three tablespoons of water and I've got the Easy Read mini measuring cup here. It makes it nice and simple. You've got one to four tablespoons and it even breaks it down to an eighth of a cup and a sixteenth of a cup. One of the reasons I love that one. And then last, a half a cup of vegetable oil. The rest of our brownie mix. You've got your mixer right here, so we're gonna go ahead and set that on. Lock it in place. And then just start mixing. One thing I like to do about halfway through is I put the mixer all the way to the bottom and I twist it. So that helps get any of the dry ingredients that might have been smushed to the bottom. And go again. And like with any baking, you don't want to overmix. Once you have your mixture made, you're going to pull this out and you're going to put the mixer on this. I just like to set it right on the counter next to the dispenser. Ring it up, slide it off, and stick it right on top. Then you bring it back in, put it in at an angle so your air comes out. And once you hit the batter, straighten it out, lock in place. You're good to go. Big brownie pan first. I'm going to change it to the uh, bigger setting. Fill it up. Give it a squeeze. If you like things on your brownies at this point, you could add chocolate chips on top or sprinkles on top. I prefer them just plain. Now for the minis, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to the small. It almost needs like a half a squeeze. Whoops, overfilled it. Full squeeze is a little too much. That was so easy, you guys, and I made it all right here in the batter mixer dispenser. One thing to clean up, and it's all dishwasher safe. Who doesn't love that? I've already got my oven preheated. The box called for 350, but don't forget, when you're cooking in a darker colored bake pan, you wanna drop the oven temperature by 25 degrees. So it is set for 325. 
For the larger full size brownies, I recommend starting at 20 minutes and just checking them. And then if they need more time, adding a minute or two at a time. For the minis, I recommend starting at 15 minutes and doing the same thing, adding a minute or two. I'm gonna put them both in at 15, just so the minis don't accidentally overbake. because nobody likes hard as a rock brownie. While the brownies are cooking, we are gonna whip up some fresh whipped cream to serve on top of them. And it only takes three easy ingredients. Some heavy whipping cream, vanilla extract, and powdered sugar. And don't forget your Pamper Chef whipped cream maker. I always start with the powdered sugar and I do two tablespoons. You can do more or less depending on how sweet you like it. Then it's one teaspoon of vanilla. Now you're going to add your heavy whipping cream up until underneath the line. Don't go over that line, otherwise you will have whipped cream everywhere and it makes a pretty big mess. Put your lid on and lock it in place. And now you're just going to whip. So it's gonna get harder and harder. You can always check it. I like my whipped cream thicker, so I'm gonna keep whipping. If you like it that texture, you can stop right now. There you go. Nice, yummy whipped cream. Since the brownies aren't done, I'm gonna go ahead and scoop all this off and put it in the fridge. Good thing about the whipped cream maker is it comes with its own lid. Silicone base pops right off, put it right on top, and put it in the fridge for when you're ready to serve. Mini brownies are done and they took 17 minutes. One thing with these, you wanna get them out of the pan right away, otherwise they keep cooking and they're gonna get hard. So I wanted to show you how I take them out of the pan. I take one of my stackable cooling racks, I set it right on top, grab my little grippers, and flip it over. You have a little shake and out they come. Perfect. I always like to come back and flip them over. I like the top of brownies over the bottom of brownies. Hot, they are hot. You can take another rack, which I've done before and set it on top and flip that one over so then they flip over and you don't have to do it by hand. And you just leave those to cool. And now our regular brownies are done. Those ones took 24 minutes, so not much longer. I have been checking them though. I've been using the cake tester releaser from Pamper Chef. You just stick it in the middle and if it comes out clean, it's all done. You can actually get the regular size brownie pan, the mini size brownie pan, and the cake tester all in a set if you want. Like I said with the minis, you wanna get them out fast so they don't keep cooking. With the regular size brownie pan, I highly, highly recommend our nylon spatula. Since it is non-stick, you don't want to use any metal with it. You want to either use silicone or nylon. And this is the perfect size. So you just want to kind of release the sides a little bit and then scoop them out. And if you greased it properly, you should be able to flip them out just like I did with those minis. Yeah. Obviously it doesn't work every time. And there you have it. We have. Now that they've all cooled, I went ahead and grabbed the whipped cream out of the fridge and I was just going to plate one up. My husband's already gone ahead and had a few of the bite sized ones. Those are his favorite because it makes him feel like he's not eating that much. So you can fancy it up and put it in a decorator bag if you want. I like to just grab my scoop and spread. Scoop some out and put a nice little dollop right on top. And now you look like you know what you're doing. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Don't forget, if you like the video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you know somebody who has a brownie pan, feel free to share the video with them. Maybe they need to know how to make some brownies.